Welcome to another message from Citizen Heights. We are located in the nation's capital, where our heart is to inspire hope, remove limitations, and help you experience God's possible for your life. Join Pastors Michael and Heather Giroux in their passion to help you live your best life. We hope you enjoy today's encouraging and uplifting message. Hello, church. It's so good to be here with you, to see you. So excited just for what God has in store for all of us. First, I want to just say shout out to our pastors. We have an amazing pastor. Help me honor them this morning. Let's clap for them. We have amazing pastors that, gosh, the vision that was shared for our church last week, incredible. I'm excited to be on this journey, to be ministering, you know, along with this we have incredible pastors. We've got an incredible church, right? We've got a really cool church if you look, about, look at it. And I, I, I grew up in church, so I can tell you this is a cool church because the church I grew up in was not cool. We've got the lights. We've got the screens. We've got cameras. We've got technology. Back in the day, there was this guy with a saxophone, and he would, he would find songs off the radio and play them at church. It was it was odd, but it was, you know, it was Bible-believing, and it was full of the gospel. I'm so thankful for the foundation, but it wasn't as cool as this atmosphere, so I don't take it for granted. Other things that, you know, weren't really cool about church, church fashion back in the day, also not cool. You know, I don't miss the 80s and the 90s, and gosh, the homemade clothes that my mother would dress me in. I love her, but I just wasn't feeling them, and I think about some of the fashion that we had back then. Do any of you remember the WWJD bracelets? The what would Jesus do bracelets? That's church, that's church fashion. You know, you're wearing that bracelet. Man, I got a bracelet in youth group, and it was hunter green. And I thought, oh, this is so professional, and I can wear this to, to school, and I can wear this with my outfit on Sundays. But I wasn't totally feeling it. I wasn't totally feeling my hunter green WWJD bracelet. So I went, I went to the store, and I said, Sir, can you show me where you keep your jewelry? Because in my head, this WWJD bracelet, it's like a canvas bracelet, people. It's not jewelry. Can you show me to your jewelry? I want to pick out another bracelet. I didn't see it in the, in the cabinet. And I said, I'm looking for a WWJD bracelet. He's like, we keep that at the counter with the gum. I went, okay. So he showed me, he showed me the, the basket of WWJD bracelets, and I picked out one that was, at the time, it was, was rainbow colored. I love rainbow colored everything because it matches every outfit, no matter what you're going to put on, what, what you're going to wear. A rainbow colored WWJD bracelet was right in style for me. And although I may not be wearing that WWJD bracelet anymore, that message still stands true. What would Jesus do? And I'm thinking about today because today is Citizen Group Sunday. And if Jesus were here, what would he do? He would join a group. Hands down, no questions asked, he would join a group. We're going to talk about that today, how he was constantly and consistently investing in relationships. So what would Jesus do? He would join a group. You should join a group too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for a church that creates a space for us to grow with you in our citizen groups creates a space for people to share and live life with one another. And I pray for the, just the words that you have for us today. May it be a now word and a timely word, God, that you just work in our hearts today. Pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. The way Jesus lived in relationship shows us that he embraced the power of partnership. And he believed in more than a passive, casual relationships in church. He believed in dynamic, meaningful relationships. That's what you're going to get here at Citizen Heights. He invested in his relationships. He invested in his disciples. His disciples invested in people, and it began to multiply and multiply and multiply. That's what a partnership is, and that's what we get with our citizen groups. It's a partnership where everyone is bringing something to the table. It's true commitment and true devotion, and it's a co-investment. Mark 12, 30 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, listen this, 
you should love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater th than these. Meaningful relationships were so important to Jesus that he likened it to the second most important commandment after loving God. I mean, that's a reality check right there. Love God and then love your neighbor. That was number one and number two. That real love means commitment. It means sacrifice. It could mean an inconvenience sometimes because you have to drive somewhere to show up at somebody's house and go to their group. But it also means partnering with them and those people that you're in relationship with. I think about when I started coming to Citizen Heights and I wasn't all about partnering. In fact, I sat in the back. I tried not to talk to anyone. If you look at me today, you probably can't imagine me not wanting to talk to people, but I didn't. I wasn't making eye contact. During the five, I had this one guy that we would like say hello to just to, so I was being obedient and I'd sit back down in my seat. I wasn't trying to connect. And it's interesting because like I said, I grew up in church. You know, I believed in the Bible and the truth of it. I had been in, in small groups before and had seen the benefit of that in my life. But when I kind of moved to DC in a new season of my life, I was focused on different things. I was trying to build my career. And I mean, coming to church was like the break that I took for lunch and then I went back to work. Like, that's just the season that I was in. Um, and so I, I kind of hesitated joining a group, and I kind of just wasn't sure if I wanted to commit, right? Like, to put that on my schedule, yet another thing. And I was kind of feeling like, you know, I needed to make a commitment to, to coming to church, and if this is where I wanted to be, if it really wanted to sit with my life. And so I went to a small group. I was still sitting in the back, not talking to anyone, but I went to a small group, and you know, I don't live a life of regret, but if I could do 10, 12 years differently, it would have been to join a group right away. Why wait? I missed out on community. I missed out on friendship. I missed out on growing in God. I missed out on my ability to feed into other people at that time. I started attending that group and I met a woman that I didn't see probably for several months. The time I was waiting for my bar exam results and she said, I'm gonna pray for you. I didn't know her, I, don't even rem I didn't remember her name at the time. And she started texting me little by little as you're waiting for these results that are gonna set the trajectory for your career. Um, and I was so thankful for that. She texted me on the day I got my results. She said, I found your name on the website, you passed, congratulations. I was like, amen. I'm glad you didn't break bad news to me, which I did break bad news to somebody about bar exam results. Don't do that. Um, but I was so thankful just for that, for that relationship. And, you know, like I didn't know her name at the time, but she was praying for me. Even when, you know, I didn't know her, I hadn't made that connection. I'm so thankful for that. We're still connected and friends today. She just texted me probably two days ago. I'm so thankful for that. That power of partnership can truly change our lives. And I would just encourage you, if you're on the fence, if you're thinking about it, maybe you've done groups before. You're like, I've done that. I've been there. You know, you feel solid in your Christian walk. It's for all of us. We all need it. Because we are called to live life of partnership. As followers of Jesus, we don't have to go it alone. I mean, Jesus himself was always in relationship. He rolled 12 deep everywhere he went. Think about it. He was the, the author and the creator. He didn't need to be with people. He was fine by himself. He could, he could do it all, but he chose to live a life of partnership. And he was always building people up, and he accomplished his goals in his ministry and partnership. He even asked for help. And again, he didn't need to do that. When he entered the garden of Gethsemane, he asked his disciples to pray and keep watch. Matthew 26 says, taking along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he plunged into an agonizing sorrow. And then he said, this sorrow is crushing my life out. Stay here and keep vigil with me. So Jesus wasn't afraid to, to show his emotions. He wasn't afraid to show that he, he wanted people around him to surround him, to partner with him. It's vulnerable to step into a group, right? People that you don't know, that you've never seen before. I love people, but it can be a little intimidating to step into a new situation. And even Jesus said, friends, I need you to walk with me, to stand beside me. His followers were always in partnership. Jesus didn't send his people out alone. He sent them out to live their lives, to fulfill their callings, to pursue their dreams in relationship. 
Luke 10, 1 says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And even in their worst times, his, his followers, they had each other. After the crucifixion of Jesus, we find the disciples together, taking care of each other. I am thankful that, you know, I have been in a citizen group and I've been with a community of women for those times when life was less than lovely, you know? I, I had a time when I just was going through a lot and I'm thankful that I could send a text out and somebody was able to go pick up my car and someone was able to go call the contractors that were coming to my house and stop them from coming. And someone was able to get me some food when I was coming. I didn't have to worry about anything because I had surrounded myself in this community of people, you know, that were partnering with me. And, and even more importantly, I know I have been through seasons of my life where I just wasn't praying like I should have been praying, to be honest with you. Not that my faith was lost or was gone. I just, I didn't have the faith to, the words to pray sometimes. And that's the beauty of partnering with other people in our groups is that they're these people that are living life with you. They're going to pray for you when you can't believe for yourself. They're going to pray for you when you don't have the words. You know, it's incredible when you are in these groups and you're living life with people and someone texts you a scripture that's so timely, so important. You're like, I never even heard of that before. That was in the Bible. And I, you know, I know my Bible and someone can send me a scripture like that. That is God because these relationships are from him and they're so, you know, important to us. These relationships are so important for Jesus to seek out. Jesus, who was the most powerful, he could do it on his own. He was the wisest person. He, and, 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 and he had a full schedule. I mean, look at Jesus' life. He was doing miracles. He was healing, healing people. He was feeding people. We can all say we have a busy, packed schedule, but his schedule was full. And still, he made the time to live life with people, partnering with, with his disciples so that the ministry could be built, that the kingdom could be built, so people weren't going to miss out on the blessings that were in store for them. If it was important enough for Jesus to put time for people in his calendar, certainly our schedules are not too full to make that time, too. True partnership means investment. John 13, 35 says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We can be in these relationships and sometimes be a kind of consumer instead of a partnership to see what we can get out of it. We can be a little picky, a little choosy, and there's a big difference. When we partner, we invest personally, and we partner in the success and strength and encouragement of others. And it takes a lot to, to partner and invest. It takes time, energy, resources. We invest emotionally in other people. We're also investing spiritually in other people, imparting the kingdom and eternal things into other people's lives. And t I'll tell you, you're not going to regret it. No one ever joins a group and spends time investing in people's life and says, oh, I wish I hadn't prayed for that person. You're never going to say you wish you didn't pray for that person or you wish you didn't take the time for them because you're going to help people find their callings. It doesn't get better than that to help people find their mission, to impart blessings into people's lives. These are the testimonies. These are what we hear out of citizen groups, helping people get free from bondage. Amen. I, I'm a part of that. I'm praying with you. I'm standing with you. I am privileged to have that opportunity week after week for the women that join my group to pray along with them, to help them find their place in ministry. It's so important to help people overcome pain and hurt. And, and, Yes, you could do it alone, but it takes a long road. It's a lonely road alone. Why, why do life alone when you can have other people walking along with you? You know, investing physically and spiritually in relationships, it just pays supernatural dividends, to be frank. It's bigger than you and me. The, 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 the outcome that comes is so much bigger. And partnership means a shared mission. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much that more as you see the day approaching. We have a shared goal, 
a shared mission, as Hijru push it, puts it, the confession of her hope. And we get this opportunity to journey on that shared mission together, stirring up love and good works, exhorting and encouraging each other. And if I can be a little frank with you, can I be a little frank? Okay, I'm gonna be a little frank. Sometimes we come up with excuses, right, about why we can't join a group or why we can't do something. And a reasonable person would say, that, yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. We say, you know, I can't join a group because of COVID. Nobody's gonna question COVID. Okay, that, that's why you can't join a group. We have online groups, okay, right? You know, might say, I don't have the time. I'm so busy. We've got groups, you know, midday, weekends, all the time. We come up with these excuses that would sound rational and sound reasonable. But I would encourage you, if you're saying, I just can't do a group, ask yourself about why. That annoying question that little kids ask. <laughs> Turn that on yourself. But why are you saying that? Really question yourself. It could be fear, right? It could be fear because people are going to know what's, in, what's going on in your life, right? We're all trying to cover it up, trying to look picture perfect. You don't have to come to a group perfect. No one is. I show up to my groups as a hot mess. I'm just thankful that my ladies love me through it, you know? It could be... Um, you know, for me, uh, when I was thinking about when I was joining groups, I, I said I grew up in church. I thought, what if I don't know as much about the Bible as I thought I knew? And they discover it. And people realize, like, she kind of skipped over some of those books in the Old Testament, right? I, I was, there was some trepidation, some fear there. And those are just excuses. Those are excuses that I was telling myself that were keeping me from being able to feed into other people and to receive from them. Oh, Gosh, I wish I could turn the pages back and, and, and do that again. Because I know my life, my life is great, but I can't imagine it being even better had I been walking the path that I was supposed to be walking all along. There's power in partnership. Ecclesiastes says, two are better than one. So listen to this scripture, because married people like to co-opt it. This is not just a married person scripture, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. This is for all of them, all of us. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. That's for all of us. You know, it's not just for the, the married people and, you know, God told Adam he needed a helpmate. He needed someone. He needed a person. He didn't say that she, he needed a wife. He was telling him he needed to partner with someone else. That's exactly what we all need is to partner with other people. We could do life alone. That's one route. But we see the God way, the good way, the better way is to partner with other people. And there's power in that partnership. When we're in those relationships, we can accomplish so much more. We can recover from our losses and achieve our wins so much quicker and more effectively. And that power of partnership, it's not only additive, it's multiplicative. God says that one person puts a thousand to flight and two people put 10,000 to flight. So if you want to see that transformation in your life, if you want to see victory, then I encourage you to plug in to a Christ-centered relationship. And the name of today is Citizen Group Sunday. We want to join a citizen group. And I know maybe you might be new here and you don't know people and you're thinking, well, I don't know anyone. I don't want to show up at Ruth's house. You know, that's kind of awkward. Let me tell you something. Our citizen group leaders are the friendliest, most inviting people. We're excited to have you. We're excited to welcome you into our homes and to our calls because that's part of, you know, our calling. I know I have been praying for Citizen Group Sunday and for whoever would join my group. And if it's my group or whoever I encounter to help them find the group that's right for them. That is a privilege as a citizen group leader. Maybe you have been attending church for a long time and you're kind of sitting on the fence like, I've done groups before. I didn't get anything out of it. They're just eating pizza. I'm, I'm kind of over that. Let me challenge some of those thoughts for you. You know, groups are so much more than that. It's building a foundation for the future because you're building these relationships for people. 
and you never know when you're going to need them. I hear so many reports from people. You know, I was sitting in a citizen group, and I didn't know anyone. I started praying this woman, and she had a job for me. She was able to review my resume. This person was able to give me investing advice. This person was able to partner with me on a business adventure. I didn't know, and we started talking about people that we had in connection, and that I found out that we were related, and I didn't know I had family in the area. It's incredible to hear the stories that can come out of that. I know for a lot of us, you've had friends move away over the past few years, uh, friends that aren't available. And citizen groups is just another way to recenter to find that connection and that grounding. And I want to encourage you, those of you that maybe have attended before, you know, attended groups before and kind of backed away, or maybe you said, well, I, I used to go to small groups in my old church, but I'm not, you know, I'm not in that season anymore. I want to challenge you because this is a time to reinvest. We've been hearing that word a lot lately and reestablish that support that you can give and receive in godly relationships. Because with partnerships, it goes both ways, right? You receive, but you also give. I am so thankful for the advice and the wisdom that I receive from the women that I'm in groups with because they're telling me the power of their testimony. I hear some of the things that they have overcome, the things that have encouraged them. I go, wow, she can do it. I know she's going to cheer me on as I go through that same situation. It's so easy to establish relationships in church. There's, there's no reason for you to, to come and say, I don't know anyone. We make it so easy in how to, you, you can access groups and, and join along. And I don't want you to walk out of this room thinking that relationships and, and people that are joining groups because there's something wrong with them. It's for, oh, it's for people that their life is broken. Let's, let's have a reality check here. Jesus' life was not broken, Right? Do you think Jesus was in a relationship and partnered with people because he needed to? No. He did it because that was who he is. He did it because that's how he loves, and it's how we love one another. We love each other by being in partnership together. Everyone in this church needs to be in a meaningful partnership with other believers. And that's something that we all need to just really focus on. If Jesus made the time for it, if Jesus saw the important for it, importance for it, certainly we all need to make the time and see the value in it. You know, living in relationships is not something we schedule when we find time. We make the time for the things that are priorities in our lives, right? You know, we, we make sure we've got food. We make sure that we're paying our bills. If a relationship and a, and a partnership and a godly relationship is important for you, you'll make the time for it, right? It could be inconvenient Maybe you have to go to a later exercise class. Okay. Maybe you need to work at the schedule with your spouse so they can pick up the kids so that you can go to the group because you want to make sure that you, you hit this mom's group. We can make the time. Because as believers living in a relationship, it's who we are. God is a relational spirit. He was our father. He sent his son. Relationship. He calls us his children. That's a relationship. God came down from heaven to walk with Noah, we read about. That's a relationship. Jesus calls us his friend. I am a friend of God. That is a relationship. And as his children, we are born again to be relational members of his church. We need relationships. It's who we are. It's who we are. And I don't want anyone to, to leave today to think that groups aren't for them. We've got people that work hard to make citizen groups are safe. We've got in-person groups and online groups. You don't want to turn on your camera? Don't turn on your camera. It's okay. We'll love you where you are. If you're on my group, I may talk about how you don't have your camera on the whole time, but it's totally okay. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I probably will say something. Um, I'll get you to turn your camera on. You know, it's okay if you come to groups and you don't want to share, right? You just want to sit and receive. God will work in your heart so when you feel ready and comfortable, you're going to start to share. You're going to want to get to the blessings and the wisdom and the prayer that those people are going to have to offer you. It's incredible. We've got amazing citizen group leaders that are going to make you feel welcome and at home. And I remember what it was like to be at a new church or uh, to be new and the, the, the prospect of starting new relationships. It's scared. It can be awkward, you know. 
It was nerve wracking, but I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I'd do it again and again, and that's why they can't get me to stop signing up <laughs> for citizen groups. Cause I'm like, oh, I wanna be in relationship. I wanna partner, I wanna grow, I wanna know more. I'm excited about what God has in store for me by partnering with so many different people. Citizen groups are where strangers became friends for me and where friends became family. And I promise it will be the same for you. So don't leave today, don't sign off today without taking that step to sign up for a group and show up for a group. Some people will sign up and never come. I'll still pray for you if you're on my list. But just think about what would happen if you showed up to the group and you made those connections. I promise you, signing up and showing up for a citizen group is gonna be one of the best decisions you make this year. Make 2022 a powerful year. You can do it, and it's gonna be great. All right, family, will you join me in prayer? Father God, I just thank you that you love us enough to call us your children. You call us your friend. Lord, I thank you that we value that relationship and we understand that you've called us to engage in real, meaningful relationships. God, I pray for everyone that can hear the sound of my voice, that you would connect them with other men and women who love them, who encourage them, who inspire them, who lift them up when they are down, who cheer them on so that they can be rejoicing with you. I pray for each person in this room that's online with us, that we would find and join and attend a citizen group, a group that would be so richly blessed to have them in Jesus' name. And with every eye closed, I pray for one other group of people, people that maybe don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know that our God is a good God. He is gentle and he's kind and he loves you with an everlasting love. And if you want to give your life to, to Jesus today, if you want to know him, just lift up your hand. That's all you need to do. Raise your hand, and I will let you know I'm praying for you. Jesus loves you. Today is the day of salvation for you. I thank you, Jesus, that you're walking in people's lives, that you're moving mountains, Father God, that you see us as your children, and that you love us just as your heart. Everyone repeat after me. Jesus, thank you for loving me and receiving me as I am. I give you my life. I give you all my good and all my bad. And I surrender it to you. I love you, Jesus. I know that you have saved me and made me brand new. I am a Christian. By Christ, I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen.